Okay, here we are, south of Mullabrack, north of Market Hill, right beside Gosford Forest Park. And we're going to trace the old railway line from Market Hill down to Newry. So this is where the line went through the countryside. You can still see the tree line crossed over here. At uh, This is the road to Rich Hill, I believe. Crossed over at this point. There's not a whole lot of evidence of a railway crossing here. It must have been grade separated because... Everything else is quite high above the road. So the trains would have crossed over the top here somewhere, I think. And then it would have crossed over this Market Hill Road, which you would know as the Newry Armagh Road. And down into what is now housing development. So this housing development has been built on top of the old tracks. So this is where the trains would have come. I think this road might have been partly built on top of it too. And then there's a little crossover point here. This is where the trains ran underneath this road. So the bridge is still intact. Probably filled in underneath many years ago. This is Alexander's of Market Hill. So the trains would have run through what is now their car park. And when these Google satellite photos were taken, there still wasn't a whole lot of development on top of this ground. This land was undeveloped. Don't know if it's still like that. It's been a while since I was in Market Hill. And the trains ran along here, along what is now this car park, and this building here, which I believe now is a private house, used to be Market Hill train station. Now, I had a hard time finding any decent photos of the old Market Hill station. Uh, they're not much different from what it looks like now. This is the best I could get here. It's got a big watermark in the middle. So if you find any decent photos of the station, I'd be interested in having a look. And the trains ran along here, through the back of what is now the extension at the back of Hunter Supermarket. Now this satellite, now this Street View photo was taken a little bit earlier before the store was extended, so the trains would have run along this that lane and out through the fields here. This, I would imagine, would have been a level crossing. So Hunters has been extended, <laughs> yeah, I used to work around this area many years ago and uh, you know, Hunters was a thriving business even back then and I'm delighted that they're able to expand and especially in the age of Tesco and Sainsbury and all sorts of outsiders coming in and you know mopping up all the business that uh, local businesses used to, local family businesses used to uh, cater for. I'm delighted that they had to. They're so successful that they had to expand. It was just a shame that they had to expand on the top of the tracks. You know, you got all this parking space out the front. I feel like this expansion could have been handled maybe a little differently. There must have been some way we could have squeezed in the parking and the store without having to expand on top of the tracks. It's unfortunate. If I recall correctly, Hunters used to be a supermarket that came right up to the footpath. You walked in directly from the street, but now you have to walk in through a car park. So that's another pattern of development that I'm not terribly fond of. Great to see the business doing so well, though. Very nice people in Hunters. So if we're ever going to get this line reopened, this is something that's going to have to be resolved. Because for the most part, the right-of-way through Market Hill is remarkably clear, unusually clear. Very rare to see that through a town that the old disused railway was not totally built on top of. You know, crossed over this road here, don't know if it was a level crossing or grade separated, probably a level crossing. It's down through the fields, nothing has been built on top of the vast majority of the old right of way. And if we're reopening the line, obviously we can't pick up the route through this housing area, but there's open fields to the left, to the west of them, so it wouldn't be impossible to get the railway back down through here. Hope we can come to some arrangement for this, if it ever comes to that. A bit of open space here. I don't know if that's part of the primary school. Let me know in the comments what you think of that. So let's press on south through the fields, heading towards Newry. There's a crossover point here. This part's quite interesting. Someone's built a house here very close to the old tracks, but retained the old railway bridge, and it's been repurposed now as a private driveway up to his home. So you can almost picture the trains coming out through here. So this would have been the old road. 
this road here is uh, a more recent development. Very cool. And there in the distance, look at that, you can see the embankment running through the fields. Almost like it's waiting for the trains to come back. Hasn't gone away, you know. Let's keep following the tree line through the fields. There's a crossover point here. Someone's built a house on top of it. This might have been grid separated. Difficult to tell. Don't see much evidence of a bridge here, do you? And then this part of the Nuri Armagh Road was built on top of the tracks. So again, for getting the line reopened, we might have to deviate from the original route somewhat. And I believe we're coming up to Glenown Road here at some point. There's Glenown Road. And now there was a station here at this point. This, uh, this someone, what was the station called? Lockerley Station? Can't remember what it was called offhand. And I believe this old wall that we're looking at here ran alongside the old tracks. So the trains would have run on the other side of this wall. There's a house here and probably built on top of the tracks. It's quite a relatively more modern looking house. And another interesting little fact is there used to be a tram that ran from this station down what is now Glenan Road. There was a tramway that ran all the way down to Glenan to Glenan Mill. There was a mill down there powered by the river. And the tram carried coal to the mill and it carried linen from the mill back up to the main Belfast Dublin railway line. So the mill was around here. It was demolished recently. There's really nothing left of it now at this point. I know you can't save all these old buildings, but I really think we can do better. I feel like something could have been done with that mill. You know, a lot of mills are converted in England, where I used to live in Manchester. A lot of the old mills and warehouses have all been converted to luxury loft apartments. And the younger generation just loves that sort of thing, living in the center of town. A lot of potential for those buildings if they're used sensibly. Okay, we're back to where the station was. We're going to carry on out into the fields, following the line. Get a crossover point here. Let's see, is there anything visible? Any evidence of a bridge? I don't think there is. Not much evidence of a bridge or a level crossing here. You wouldn't know trains ever ran through here, would you? Let's follow the tree line through the fields. A crossover point here. What have we got? Mm, not much evidence of a railway here either. So the trains would have gone somewhere out here into those fields. And I'm going to zoom out a little here because the line disappears, reappears here, we've got a crossover point. Trains would have crossed over somewhere about here, really not much left of it. Let's keep going. Now this is where it looks like the line abruptly disappears. It actually disappears underground. It goes into a tunnel under, through these fields. And this is the beginning of the Lissaman Tunnel. And forgive me if I'm murdering the pronunciation of that. I'm not totally familiar with this area. There's a photo point here where you can look at the entrance to the tunnel. Look at that. Great 360 degree view. Thank you, Declan Kennedy, for posting this. Can you imagine steam trains coming out of this thing? So this tunnel was a mile long. And apparently you can hike through it. There's a blog post that I'm going to share with you. I'll give you a link to this in the description. Yeah, this gentleman here hiked through the middle of the tunnel with his kids. Great little story. Looks like I had a great day out. Frankly, it would give me the heebie-jeebies walking through a tunnel like that. To say nothing of bringing my kids with me. But a lot of interesting facts there about the tunnel. How it was built. All built by hand. All the little refuges. Highly recommend giving that giving a read. Stalactites forming here because there's been seepage after all these years. Talks about the full history of the tunnel, when it was built, when it was closed. 
looks like he had a great time with his family. Fantastic. Okay, back to the map. So that tunnel goes under the fields. And there's another photo point at the south entrance. Here it is. And I love this photo. So there's the entrance coming up from Newry. There's the other entrance. And what's really cool about this photo Looking through the fence, see that little point of light? That literally is the light at the end of the tunnel. You can see from one end of the tunnel to the other, and apparently when you're hiking through it, you're walking towards that light and it just doesn't seem to get any bigger, because it's so far away. Great little bit of history. So apparently this tunnel's still in reasonably good condition, so it's not impossible, I think, to get trains running through it again. Okay, let's follow the tree line. It curves through the fields here, we have a crossover point. Let's take a look at this one. So I think there's uh, evidence of grade separation here. A few walls on either side of the road. Not much left of the old bridge, but there's still some evidence of it. There's the old walls. And let's keep going south. Gets a little tricky to pick up the line in a few places. I'm not going to look at every crossing point and leave you to do that in your own time. And this is where we join the existing Belfast Dublin line. Now we could just follow the line down to the existing Newry station, but that would be boring. So we're going to follow the line, the other line that went into the centre of Newry. If I can remember where it diverges, I think it's up out here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. It diverges off to the right. Yeah, this is the existing Belfast to Dublin line, and this is the remains of the old line that went into your either crossover point here. Is there anything left of it? Not a whole lot. I believe that's it. Yeah, I think the trains went that away through the fields. Keep going south, and then it crosses over what is now the A1. This enormous junction was built on top of the tracks, and we pick up the remains of the line around here. Can you see it? That's not it. This is it. That's where the trains used to run through that gate, down through the fields. I'm guessing this might have been a level crossing. But again, it's kind of hard to tell, you know, so much has changed over time. I think the line went down here. We've got a crossover point at this point. Yeah. Might have been some great separation here, judging by this wall. So this might be a trench that was filled in. I'm curious about what this is here. This ruin. Big, long, linear thing. Was it old, an old mill or something? I'm curious about what that was. I don't think it was a station. Let's keep following the line. These big roads have been totally rebuilt over the years, and they don't really leave a whole lot of evidence behind them of the old railway, but the trains would have passed underneath here. That's the Newry Bypass, isn't it? I think. So the trains run at the back of what is now these housing developments. Interesting that the housing developments haven't gone out all the way on top of the tracks, which is nice, and there's a bit of clear ground here through the middle. And there's grounds for hope here for getting this line reopened into the centre of Newry, because not a whole lot has been built on top of it. There's a business here, a little business center. I'm sure we could relocate that. I don't know if too many people would miss it. Move it to a nearby location. You know, there's not a whole lot of architectural value in this, in my opinion. Maybe in a hundred years, we might feel differently about it, but. This is where the line went, down through these sports fields by the recreation centre, and we arrive at 
Translink depot. It's a bus depot now, but this used to be Newry Station. This used to be Newry Edward Street Station. And I say Newry Edward Street Station because there were not one, not two, not three, but four stations in Newry back then, if you can believe that. Nowadays, there's not even one station in Newry. There's one station at the edge of Newry. It used to be called Newry Bestbrook because it's almost as close to Bestbrook as it is to the middle of Newry. It's like the middle of nowhere, basically. I think if you had a train station right here in the middle of town, a lot more people would be using it. And there'd be a lot more onus on Translink to run more frequent train services from Newry if it was within the walking distance of more of the people who actually live there. So there's what it looks like now. And as a bus depot, you know, it doesn't really need to be in the centre of town. It could be in an industrial estate on the edge of town. Buses can go wherever they want. Trains, not so much. This old wall here, I think, was part of the original, part of the original setup. I love it that there's all these little clues, little pieces of evidence left lying around. So getting the line reopened as far as Edward Street, I think, is entirely achievable. There's a few little challenges there up the line. There's a couple of houses. There's Hunters in Market Hill. There's uh, that business centre that we just looked at. But I don't know if they're insurmountable goal, uh, insurmountable problems. Now the line used to continue on far farther south. I'll just trace it with you. It goes through what is now a car park, cross a level crossing, past another, through another car park, down through another car park. This big long linear car park at the back of what I believe is the Southern Regional College. Big long linear car park like that. Can you imagine steam trains used to run along here? I think that's remarkable. So, if we get into a bit of a built up housing development area, there's still a bit of clear ground here when the satellite photo was taken, but when the street view photo was taken more recently, it becomes clear that this has already been developed. But housing has been built here on top of the old tracks. And I'm not as upset about that as I would be about. Uh, a few other places because I mean we're getting into the center of Newry here it's been heavily built up over the years and yeah it is a shame that the railway right-of-way wasn't left clear but let me just show you where the tracks used to go there was a line that went down here towards Carlingford and there was another one that branched off here the line split at Francis Street one line went Basically, it's split on either side of Carlingford Lock. So this uh, this line went to Omeath and Carlingford, and the other split that came across here, across the Keys, went to Warren Point. And I think Newcastle too. So there's a, some great old photos of these old. Uh, well, there's Edward Street Station in Newry. It was all steam trains, 1963. And uh, here is Bridge Street level crossing. Can you imagine stopping on Bridge Street and seeing a big steam train going through on the way to Carlingford? And here's where the trains crossed over at the Keys, crossed over the canal. I'm very curious about this. I'm wondering how the boats got past. I wonder, did they lower the water? Was there a lock thing going on here where they lowered the water and let the boats pass? Or did this bridge somehow move out of the way? Did it lift up? Did it swing around? How did they do it? Very curious about that. Let me know in the comments if you know anything about it. And there's Dublin Bridge Station, another station in Newry. Let me see if I can show you the stations in Newry. So there's the existing one, Newry Bestbrook. Now it is just known as Newry. This was Edward Street Station. This one was Bridge Street. And the other one was Dublin Bridge. And there's the line going out to Warren Point. So we could trace the, uh, the line all the way out to Warren Point. I'll let you do that in your own time. Um, it went across this island here, which now seems to be a car park. There was a bridge. At this point, you can just see the vestiges there of the bridge, some of the piers and supports. Still a bit of a pipe or something going over there. I'm not sure what that is, or a girder. Uh, yeah, this is where the trains used to cross over and track to what is now the Warren Point Road. Quite a big road, actually. It's been A lot of it has been expanded. I don't know if this was. I don't know if this was the old railway. I mean, you know, in theory, yeah, you might be able to tighten this road up a bit. It's got a big, wide central reservation. It doesn't need to be as wide as it is. 
and you could in theory get the line reopened to Warren Point but the question stands what are you going to do when you get into the centre of Newry again you know you can't it's very hard to see a way of getting a train getting a railway line through the middle of all this butter crane centre certainly we're not going to pick up the traditional route and go through the middle of the butter crane but if we uh, I think it would definitely be great if we could get the line reopened from Market Hill down to Newry and it should be achievable to get the line extended down as far as Edward Street and put a station back in here right where it was before. The fact that Translink still owns the property certainly makes that easier. Wouldn't that be something if you could walk into, walk through a door right here, buy your tickets, hop on a train, and a short time later you're in Belfast. That's the potential. That's the potential of our railways. We have the potential to bring these lines back into service because so much of them are still intact. These sports fields might be an issue, but I'm sure we could figure something out. Do a cut and cover job, you know, build a tunnel. Take a big pit, put your lines in, put a roof on top, put the sports field back on top of it. It's a cheap way of building tunnels. New York subway was built using the cut and cover method. So that's the Market Hill to Newry line. A lot of interesting history of the railways in Newry heavily industrialized. A lot of it would have been used for the movement of goods as well as people. Very different times. But uh, you know, railways are having a moment. I really think we should think hard about how feasible it is to bring them back because it might be easier than at first sounds.